Welcome. Everyone talks about the value of pi for a circle. It's the circumference of the circle divided by diameter and seems to be the same for all circles. That's what people like to believe. Uh, let me be very clear on this. Let me draw a circle. The diameter is the largest core that fits in the circle, and we define pi to be circumference over diameter. So here's my question today. Why do circles get all the special treatment here? I'm going to ask, what's the value of pi for a square? Okay. Now, let's see. What we're going to do is take this definition, pi is circumference divided by diameter, and do my best, best to mimic it. Alright, so pi for a square should be circumference. Well, let's see. If circumference is really perimeter, so I'm going to say it's the perimeter divided by the diameter. Well, diameter, another way of saying diameter is twice the radius, so some people say circumference over twice the radius. But what do I mean by the radius of a square? Uh, I feel I know what the center means. There's some natural center for a square. Now there's actually a whole range of choices. There's the short radius, the shortest value I can do. And there's a long radius, it's the longest one I can do. And there's a whole bunch of in-between radiuses. So this is the real reason why people don't do talk about pi for a square, because they don't know which radius to use. I claim there's a good radius to use. I think the short radius is the best one to use of all. So I'll use radius short, but I guess following this formula, I mean double the radius short. And so then, if I'm going to go with the short radius, the value of a pi for a square would be its perimeter, and I've called the side of length x here, so it'd be 4x's divided by the short radius, which is half of x, I believe, but I get double that. So this is 4. The value of pi for a square is 4 with my definition of radius. Now why am I insisting that's the right definition? Well, let's see. How do people use pi for circles? Well, they say two things. The circumference of the circle is 2 pi r, and the area of a circle is pi r squared. Well, it would be nice if my definition of pi for a square worked the same way. Let's see. Circumference, we claim, is 2 pi r. All right, let's see. I know the circumference is 4x, and 2 times my value of pi is 4, and is times 4 is times the radius, x over 2, is indeed 4x. That checks. This formula is good. Well, actually, that wasn't very exciting. I actually used that as my very definition of creating pi in the first place. It would be remarkable if this area formula is valid. Let's check. Whoops. Let me, I don't mean to cross that like that. Let's just delete it like this, get myself some space. All right. I wonder if my formula area is pi r squared works. All right, the area of squared side length x would be x squared. The question is, does that equal pi r squared? Pi for a square I claim is 4. The radius is x tooths squared. And that's 4 times x squared over 4. x squared, yep. Area is pi r squared. All right, now, so then value of pi for a square I claim is 4. And I've got good justification for it because c equals 2 pi r. a equals pi r squared still work. Now, here's my little challenge for you, a little piece of homework. What's the value of pi for an equilateral triangle? And I claim if you take the shortest radius there is, and you have to play with little 30, 60, 90 triangles, work out a formula for that, and to find pi for a triangle to be perimeter over twice this short radius, you'll find that circumference is 2 pi r works, and area is pi r squared works. Check it out. It's all valid. Uh, why stop it there? Let's define the value of pi for any regular polygon. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. There's a regular well, a septagon or something. Define the radius to be the short radius. I claim if you set pi to be perimeter over twice that short radius, c equals 2 pi r works, and area is pi r squared works. Go for it. In fact, I'm going to be a little bit sneaky. I'll start to give, give the mathematics away here. Take any shape that circumscribes a circle. So, whoops, I need a pen again. Da, 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 da. So here's a circle. And any shape that circumscribes it, what I mean by that, just has size that touches the circle. Can you prove, I bet you can, might take a little bit of thought, but I bet you can, I believe in you. If you define the radius to be the radius of that inscribed circle, and set pi for that shape to be its perimeter divided by twice that radius, then you could prove the circumference of that shape is actually 2 pi r, and the area of that shape 
is again pi r squared. That would be the correct definition of pi. And let me give you a hint on how to work out the area. Work out the area as a sum of areas of little triangles. There's one triangle, there's another triangle, here's a yet another triangle, and so on. So you can compute the area as the sum of the areas of individual triangles, and you'll see that this formula falls into place. So, pi for a square, pi for a triangle, pi for a regular octagon, regular 57 gone, go for it. Here's my additional piece of homework. I guess this video is nothing but uh, challenges for you. So, uh, we defined pi for a regular triangle, pi for a square, you could do pi for a pentagon, regular pentagon, and pi for a regular hexagon, and so on. Actually, work out those values. I wonder, as you do more and more sides, do, do these values actually converge to 3.14159? That would be interesting to find out. What a great exercise for students. All right, thanks very much.